In this video, I want to show how I set up my parts for 3D printing in my resin printer. I have a Hallet Mage Pro, so I'm going to use Hallet Box software for this. You can use Lychee, G2 Box, whatever you want. I just found that the Hallet Box software works okay. It does what I need it to do. So if we go up here to open, grab our model, we open it up. There's a couple of things that we want to look at on our model. One of the things that we do not want is we don't want any flat edges to be parallel to the build plate. That will cause all kinds of problems. So in this case, what I really want is this point to be in the center when I tip it up. So if I turn this and we're going to take it to 22.5 degrees, that'll put it right in the center like I want it. Then what we need to do is we need to rotate it. 45 degrees now for tiles I usually do rotate those 45 degrees on something like this if they're a lot thinner then I'll rotate them more I'll even go up to 65 degrees it just depends I'll try to do up some use cases which show the best scenario but just know that you should be about 45 to 65 degrees the next thing I want to do is I want to raise this up on the Z plane Anywhere from 5 to 6 millimeters is fine. It doesn't need to be real far off the plane. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. So now that I have that oriented correctly, and you can see nothing is parallel to the build plane. Um, you really want to make sure that you try to get your model where nothing is parallel to the build plane. At least if it's a flat surface. So now that we have that, we want to go on to supports. And we can see where all the overhang areas are that are in red. Some of these matter and some of them don't. Um, a lot of these in here, these don't make any difference. They won't matter whenever you're printing. Same thing with the inside of these holes. They won't matter. So I'm not going to worry about anything that is basically looking at it this way. But what I will worry about is this side. So if we use auto supports... Um, you want to make these pretty dense. I see a lot of people that, you know, they try to skimp out on the supports, and that's just, that's not good. You really want to have as much support as possible, because if any part of this model is not supported correctly, it will warp. Not only will it warp, but you can get some other artifacts in your print, and it just ends up making your prints look terrible. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is the upper diameter. If If I come in here zoom in you can see that at the tip of this is my top shape it's a cone cones are fine but the upper diameter is what really matters in this case i have it at 0 0.3 you can do 0 0.2 i don't use anything above 0 0.3 unless i have a really heavy part that i need a main support for then i might up it to 0 0.5 but that's rare and I'll show use cases for that later too. So for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the auto support and we're going to say all. So let generate support. So now we have something that looks like this. And for the most part, most of this is okay. But one of the things that I've learned is that you really want to check all these edges right here on the bottom. You want to make sure that they're supported well. Because if any of that isn't, again, you'll get warping. Now, in this case, things are supported pretty good. Um, make sure that all these little tips that come down are supported. If you see something like this one, I know this isn't needed. So what we can do is go in and just delete those out. I don't need this one either or that. We can get rid of a lot of these. They just aren't needed. Same thing goes for these. That looks good. And then we can come in here and get rid of these too. Those are on our details and we just, we don't need that. So another thing to watch out for too is when they're stacked. You can see how there's a whole bunch of them in here. That were on top of each other. I just go ahead and get rid of those. And then what I'll do is I'll come in. And I'll just add my supports. Manually. So that looks pretty good. Same thing over here. 
we want to come through and just get rid of all these extra ones that are in there. You don't need this many on top of each other. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I just work my way around the model like that. So basically what we end up with is something like this. And I will also go in and I will add if there's any spots in here that I can see that are like large areas that have nothing. I'll just come in and pop some in there. That looks pretty good. So now from here, we can go ahead and slice our model and print it out. So after it's done printing, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the model. So here I wanted to show how easy it is to remove the supports, even though there's a bunch of them on this model. So when you come through, you'll see that I just push on them and they easily break away. And then once I break away all the ones on the outside edge, I just grab it and pop it off. Any of the remaining supports that are on there, they come off really easily. And if there is a few nubs here and there, you just hit them with a little bit of a fine grit sandpaper and it'll knock them right off. Again, I'm just pushing in on the supports and they break free. Then I just pop it off. So after curing, we'll take a look at them. So here's the parts after curing, and you will see little nubs that I do need to sand a little bit on. They really aren't a big deal. They take seconds to get rid of, but I think the detail turned out really nice. The stone on the sides and the edging. And this system, this is a little bit hard to put together with one hand holding the phone and the other hand trying to put them together. But they go together really easy. And once they're together, they fit really tight. So if this is something that you guys are interested in seeing is how to design stuff like this, um, leave a comment below and we'll talk about it. And I'll see if I can't make something up to help you out. I was really happy with these. So now let's take a look at a few of the images. So these are what the parts look like all put together. And here's something for comparison of scale. That's a dime. So these are really, really small. Um, any of these any little imperfections, you really can't see them when the parts are in front of you. And after they're painted, um, they're going to look really good and you, you won't have to worry about anything. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. So if it helped you or anything, then please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.